I really thought It's a Ten Hair Care could be an international brand back in 2008 when I really started seeing the growth. I took the company over in 2017 and we have seen over 100% growth. My name is Carolyn Aronson and I'm 56 years old. I'm the founder and CEO of It's a Ten Hair Care. I named my company It's a Ten Hair Care because when I actually work with chemists, they'll send me formulas and I'll then tell them, oh, it's only a three or it's only a six. So when I actually partner with them to create these formulas, I don't stop until it's a 10. And when it is a 10, that's when I say to them, all right, we're good to go. It's a 10 hair care today has over 80 different products. The Miracle Leave-In product alone comes in eight different variances. And we sell over 17 million bottles a year of just that one product. We also have expanded into hair extensions, hair tools, as well as a makeup line. My family was a middle-class family that I grew up with. My father worked for Ford Motor Company. My mother was a stay-at-home mom, but my father was quite high up at Ford. He was manager of all of labor relations. I can remember the very first time I parted my hair at five years old, and it was life-changing for me. I really felt the power of a hairstyle and changing it, what it could do for someone. So by the age of eight years old, I declared I wanted to be a hairdresser. My mother was a Columbia University grad, my father Manhattan College grad, and it's interesting, when I announced that I wanted to go to beauty school, some of their friends really said to them, aren't you disappointed? And I remember my mother saying to me, we are so proud that you know what you love to do, and we want to encourage you to obviously do that and to be the best you can at it. But we also believe that going to school at night, if you ever want to own your own salon, will really help in you running a business someday. So maybe you can do that part-time. And that's exactly what I did. By 1989, I had finished my college and really had a very established hairdressing career behind the chair and was really making great money. Opening my very first hair salon was probably one of the best business experiences I had laying the groundwork for where I am today. My father thought I was crazy. I went and did the research, created a business plan for a local bank, and he lent me $10,000 towards the purchase, but he charged me 8% interest. He wanted to show me that money doesn't come for free. And then when I went to the bank, I actually put up my condominium as collateral to purchase the actual hair salon. And it was about a 3,000 square foot salon. It was pretty large, I had 22 employees. I had met my future husband at the time, and I had sold my hair salon, I would sold my condo, I sold everything I owned and basically moved to Los Angeles with him and got married. After about a year of being there, he lost his job within the beauty industry. He was um, sales and marketing for a hair product company. And that's when he said to me, let's try to create our own brand. And I was all in. We made our first company in 2002 and it ended up completely failing. We lost over a half a million dollars and we moved to Florida and that's when we migrated into It's a 10 with our little bit of money that we had left. We each had $40,000 from the divorce and we took that money and started It's a 10 with one closeout bottle. We didn't have big marketing budgets. We were up against L'Oreal's and Procter and & Gamble's and we really didn't have a lot of money. So obviously getting it into hairdressers' hands was a major strategy of ours. We created simple, easy to use names for the products. You turn the bottle over, there's 10 bullet points that describes what the product does. I chose all the colors and they were really bright and they stood off the shelf. My 
My very first home that I flipped and made $400,000 on was what we used to create the first hair product line. So the process of our products getting picked up with other distributors, because we are a manufacturer, we sell to distributors, distributors to salons, and salons to the public. The process probably took about a year, year and a half before it really got rocking and rolling. But at that point, I was already working on some of our next products. So the process of getting the hair product line into big box retailers was a slow one, but we were able to get them into what we call specialty retail. So the Ulta's, some of the chain salons. You know, it's interesting, it tends to all build on itself. So as we became bigger in salons and through the professional industry, it was an organic fit. The consumer was loving the product these retailers wanted the ability to bring it to them. So around 2010, we really started getting into some of these larger avenues of, of distribution with the retail specialty chains such as Ulta. We also did very unique marketing concepts where we were the first brand ever to give out a million free samples throughout the Ulta stores back in 2010. There was a brand that never did that across the country. It ended up working out because Ulta was kind of new back in 2010 and we were kind of new. So all these years later, I'm still at the Ulta's nationwide. We actually really got to the point where we just were going in different directions and weren't seeing eye to eye and we were gonna sell the company and that didn't work out. So I ended up buying my partner out. My background is marketing and business. And I said, let's go really out of the box with it's a 10. So we started immediately when Carolyn bought the company, we did a Super Bowl commercial. We did a blimp over Coachella. We were supposed to get the rights to all hair care on the ground. And at the last minute, they did a deal that they wound up squeezing us out. So I said to Carolyn, you know what? We can't be on the ground, but nobody controls the air. So I went into my Rolodex. I found somebody that I knew that dealt with blimps. And we literally put the Goodyear blimp flying over Coachella with the It's a 10 logo and a hashtag and an at and hundreds of thousands of people responded. Some people say, how could you think about having a child at the age of 54? It's been the best experience. I have the support I need, and yet I work from home a lot, so I'm there for her. So it's been an amazing blend of knowing when, how far to stretch yourself and how much you can do and then learning how to ask for help when you need it. I have a total of 15 employees, kind of how I originally ran my salon. I'm working on building the pieces of property that I've purchased. And obviously one of them I turned into It's a 10's headquarters. So it's really exciting. It's a new venture for me within the commercial real estate world, but I'm looking forward to getting more involved in it. I don't think I'll ever stop working. <laughs> it's funny when my father retired at my age, 56 years old, he said, I never really fully retired. I just kind of changed jobs. I think that's pretty much how mindset will be for me as well. I don't think I'll ever fully retire. I'll just kind of shift into various different things to do. I think the company is truly on the cusp of worldwide integration. I think that Carolyn will be in the same conversation as John Paul DeGiorio in a few years.